Chapter 25, Roadkill. With one hand still on the padlock, Zoe finally managed to turn the key. She yanked her head over her shoulder and taking her cue from the rat in the laboratory, she sank her teeth into Bert's arm as hard as she could. Ow! shouted the malevolent man and in a reflex reaction, his huge hand jumped off her tiny shoulder, yanking out a large clump of her ginger hair. Zoe flung the huge metal door of the warehouse open and ran out into the industrial estate. The place was deserted, with sickly streetlights illuminating a wide street of empty, cracked concrete. Weeds grew out of the cracks. Not sure of where to go, Zoe just ran. Ran and ran and ran. She was running so fast she thought she would trip over her own legs. All she thought about was putting as much distance between her and Bert as she could. The estate was so huge though, that she was still not outside of it yet. Without daring to look back, she could hear the van's engine starting up and Bert grinding it into gear. Now Zoe was being pursued by a blind man driving a van. Finally, she turned around and saw the van completely miss the open door and crash out of the wall of the warehouse. Crash! The impact didn't stop it. Instead, the van sped faster and faster towards her. Squinting, Zoe could just see the dark holes where Bert's eyes had once been behind the windscreen. Just below them, his nose was twitching feverishly. His smell radar clearly tuned to its small ginger girl setting. The van was heading straight for her and travelling faster and faster by the second. Zoe had to do something or she would be roadkill. And fast. She darted to the left and the van lurched to the left too. She rushed to the right, and the van careered to the right. Behind the steering wheel, Bert's evil grin widened. He was speeding closer and closer to making his first small ginger girl burger. Soon, the van lurched into a high gear and started gaining on Zoe, who was running as fast as her little legs would carry her. Ahead, she spotted some bins with a pile of long-forgotten rubbish bags piled up beside them. Her mind was racing faster than her legs and she came up with a plan. Zoe jumped over to the bins and picked up a particularly heavy sack. As the van hurtled towards her, she threw the bag at the bonnet of the van. As it struck, she let out a blood-curdling scream as if she had been run over. Ah! Bert then slammed the van into reverse, no doubt thinking he would run her over one more time to make sure she was dead. As the engine screamed, so did Zoe. The van reversed over the sack. Then Bert leapt out of his van and his nose twitched as he tried to locate what he believed was the small girl's body. Meanwhile, the small girl in question tiptoed off and crawled under a wire fence into a wasteland and kept running and didn't turn back. After her body could run no more, Zoe jogged, and after it could jog no more, she walked. As she walked, she thought long and hard about what she should do next. Zoe had witnessed a blind man who drove a van making burgers out of rats. Who would believe her? Who would help her? She needed someone to help her. There was no way she could take on Bert on her own. A teacher? No. After all, she was suspended from school and forbidden to return. The headmaster would expel her on the spot if she returned. Raj? No. He was terrified of rats. He ran down the street in panic when he saw a baby one. There was no way she could get him to step one foot inside the warehouse with thousands of rats inside. The police? No. They would never believe Zoe's incredible story. She would be just another girl from the rough estate, suspended from school and now lying to get, us, to get herself out of trouble. Since Zoe was so young, the police would march her straight home to her wicked stepmother. There was just one person who could help her right now. Dad. It was a long time since he had been a proper father to her, since he had come home and given her extraordinary ice creams to taste or played with her in the park. But Sheila was wrong. Dad did love her. He always did. He just became so sad he couldn't show it anymore. Zoe knew where to find him. The pub. There was a massive problem. It is against the law for children to go into pubs.